landscape of college basketball was proven yesterday because I thought we'd drop out of the maybe 15, 16 and to lose two games and drop down to 9 or 10, I think tells you what the whole country's going through. And I was on a show with Mike Krzyzewski today and I, he started informing me about our schedule and what it was like. And, um, you know, I, I, I sense a little bit of panic around this phenomenal town of ours and uh, it's not by me. I'm a little bit more disappointed in maybe uh, some things that happened, but I'm not uh, in any panic mode. We've, we're going to play good teams. When you play good teams, you're going to lose games. And we'd like to win them all, but we're not, uh, we're not that kind of team yet. Uh, I'm hoping the best basketball we got is coming. Uh, when you look at the number of ranked teams we've played all year, it could end up half our schedule. And um, consequently, uh, you're gonna, we're all going to have to deal with some of those things. Um, in Michigan, uh, I, I arguably said that uh, that was our best game and to me one of their worst. And I was the underlying line is, uh, so did one cause the other, the other caused one. And I don't know that. I don't know how he felt they played. I know how we, I felt we played. I know how I felt they played. I didn't think they played very well. And I thought we played really well. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a different game down there. Um, they've been playing better. They had just gone through their stretch. And that's the p hardest part of this whole thing. Everybody wants to know what's wrong with people. Well, you go through stretches and get your brains beat in, or even when you're winning, um, you're having to put on so much that it's hard to stay up for every game. And uh, so right now, this week has been probably good. Had a little workout yesterday. We're giving today off. And then we're going to evaluate where we are and what we do the next couple of games. But uh, I think we'll be ready to play uh, come Sunday in a game that uh, should be a, a great basketball game. So if there's questions, I'll take them. Tom, considering the success you had in that first game, um, do you tweak a lot, or or do you just just keep it keep it the same way and and go after them the same way you did here? Well, you know, we 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 did have some success, but I don't think we can get carried away either. I mean, we shot forty eight percent, we shot thirty some from the three, we shot fifty from the line. Um, it wasn't like we came out and usually when you you play a game like that, you shoot sixty some percent, you shoot maybe uncharacteristic from the three. Um, the only thing we did that was maybe more uncharacteristic, we did rebound the ball a little better than we have in some other games. But the shooting, we're not much different than our regular. Um, defensively, I thought we did a pretty good job. I thought they missed some shots that they normally hit. So, you know, I don't know how much we're going to do different. I'm, uh, I'd like to keep it all the same. but. Uh, um, we definitely have to do some things offensively a little better, I think, if we're going to uh, win another game. Tom, how much of an enigma now is, is what Keith's going through? Maybe he spoiled us by playing so well for so long, and yet the last two games, I mean, arguably, if he had his regular game, you might have won them both. And how do you get the message that he has to play better without putting the weight of the world on his shoulders? Well, I think there's a couple different issues with that. Uh, you know, everybody wants to know about um, I, I explained to you guys that uh, I knew I would hear people that email me, you know, well, Keith doesn't play any more minutes than this guy, doesn't play any more minutes than that guy. Those of you that are big football watchers, um, did you ever watch a game and they say, well, they're on a 12 play drive and the defense is wearing down? Well, why in the hell isn't the offense wearing down? They're on the same. They're, they're doing the same thing. It's because it takes a little more effort to play defense. And and I think, you know, we ask a lot of Keith. We ask him to do it on both ends of the floor. We usually ask him to guard the best player on the other team. But uh, everybody deals with pressure a little differently. And, um, you know, I don't think Keith has played his best basketball. But if I look at the last game, uh, am I trying to take some of the pressure off him? Sure. I'm a coach. And did, did we do our job as good as we could have? No, we didn't. Did our bigs do their job as good as they could have done it? No, they didn't. Were there some moving screen call? No, there, yes, there were. So you put the whole thing together, and when 
your man's getting a layup, um, the first guy you want to blame is that, that guy. But there were, there were other people involved in it, from the coaching staff to the other players. And uh, uh, what Keith has, has done is um, he didn't have a great game against Michigan. We all canonized him. He was four for 14 at one assist. You know, so maybe he's a product of your environment. I mean, uh, we, he didn't have any necessarily uh, standout game. Keith has been very solid. He's been very good defensively. He's made big plays down the stretch. And, in, you know, he missed a free throw or two. Gary missed a free throw or two. Um, that game, if we would have defended better down the stretch, should have been won anyway against Indiana. So uh, I don't look at that as anything. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned for Keith because he's going to take the blunt of the pressure. But I've told him since the day he's been here, he's the quarterback. That's the way it works. You and I get it all. That's why we got to be on the same page together because we're the two that are going to get it. And, and uh, losing to Indiana at home, and losing to Ohio State down there, um, disappointing, but not shameful. Uh, I heard about some guys that lost some games today to different teams by 20 and 30 points that they considered shameful. So I would not consider this um, any reason to panic. It was disappointing, but I'm, I, I mean that sincerely. I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned with making sure that everybody doesn't heap everything on Keith because uh, Keith isn't the, the number one problem. There were other guys that were supposed to do their job on that that didn't. And uh, there were adjustments I think I could have made that would have changed it too. Is, is he okay physically? He kind of talked about being worn down, but kind of stopped short of saying there was anything else with his legs or anything else bothering him? No, no, I don't, there's nothing physically. I mean, um, he's played a lot of minutes. He's played them at a high level. And, um, you know, he's... He's got to do a little bit more uh, at times, you know, uh, when it comes down to the end. Um, it's not always as easy. We don't have four sh shooters on each side of him. You know, he's sometimes got to do more. And uh, so it doesn't matter whether he's doing more or less than, you know, than guys from different teams. What matters is what he does for us. So I really don't really have any interest in hearing about what other people are doing. Um, I have an interest in hearing about what Keith Appling has to do for us, and that's that's all I care about. For the most part, he's done a pretty good job of that. He's growing as he goes, and uh, and then when you start dealing with the pressure of you got a chance to win the Big Ten, you got a chance to do this, your name gets thrown around, your accolades go. Yeah, everybody gets fat and sassy a little bit, or feels the pressure. One of the two um, looks to me like he was feeling a little bit of the pressure, drags you down a little bit. One thing about Keith Appling, he's a tough enough kid. I mean, if I had to pick tough kids on my team, he'd be in the top two. So he's a tough enough kid that uh, he's going he's gonna to bounce back. Tom, you mentioned it, it's not a time to panic or anything like that. And this team seems to have done a pretty decent job of staying even keeled this year. Do you get the sense they feel the same way as you, that there's not a lot of panic right now? From them? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any panic from them. I think there's some disappointment. I think they realized they had a chance. And when you play a home game, as I said that night, I don't feel any different after watching the film over again. Um, you know, we didn't deserve to win the game, but we deserved to win the game, if that makes any sense. I mean, we didn't deserve to win the game. They outplayed us the majority of that game. Uh, we put ourselves in a position down the stretch where we made a couple of big plays. They missed a couple shots, and you know we had that lead, had a chance, and then the, the lights went out for a while, and um, you know we came back the last two minutes, and I think momentum changed a little bit, and and uh, they made plays down the stretch, and we we missed free throws, we 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 didn't make plays, but I thought the game was lost early in the game when we had some chances to do some things that we didn't do. So players know that. I mean, you're looking at the other side of the coin. We've played, as I said, one, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen. I mean, those are the ranked teams we've played. And, uh, you know, we've had a couple games that weren't as good as others, but we've been in every game with two minutes left one way or another. And uh, that's what's going to be important as we move on. 
Uh, are they panicky? No, because they know they can play with anybody because we've done it, and we've done it on a consistent basis, game after game after game. Are we head and shoulders better than anybody? No, we're not. I told you that the first day of the season and uh, haven't changed my opinion one bit. In fact, if anything, we've superseded where I thought we'd be in some ways, and, uh, and that's the way I'm going to move on. Back to Hapling, when a player is, when you're worried about fatigue or whatever, do you want a player to just get away, rest, or do you still want them to you know, go in the gym, put up shots? And then also, when you, if you're trying to uh, help take some pressure off him, do you, move, do you think about moving him to the two a little bit more, or do anything different defensively with him? I don't think I can do much different defensively with them. I mean, him and Harris are my two best defenders, and they've got to cover guys that are the best offensive players on the other team. Offensively, um, you know, I mean, you can move them around a little bit, but I don't know if that has anything to do with missing a free throw or, you know, usually a two guard is uh, more shots are going to go for the two guard if you're not shooting well. I'm not sure that always helps, but. Uh, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm meeting with Keith today, and we're just going to talk about where he thinks he is. Does he need some time off? Does he need some um, time to get in his, and, and shoot free throws and shoot jump shots and, and get some confidence back? I mean, you don't lose everything in two games, guys. I mean, it, it, it doesn't happen that way. I mean, even you guys are ready to canonize him um, for most of the Big Ten season. He's had two games where... He played on Keith Appling like. I think that's a tribute to him and how hard he plays 90% of the time. And uh, so, you know, I can be disappointed. Um, I, I, I always will be upset with a player if, if he's not playing up to the capability I think he can play to. But I also understand the reasons. And it's almost like, you know, in talking to other coaches, it's almost like we forgot what this schedule is like and what this conference is like this year. I mean, uh, I, I hate to say it because somebody brought it up to me that uh, they were shocked to hear me say four or five games ago when we were rolling. You know, I'm worried about a three or four game losing streak. I wasn't saying that to brace myself. I wasn't saying that to cover myself. I don't need to do that. I was saying it because it's the reality of what just about every team has gone through. And depending, you know, we, we went four and one in one of our tough stretches. Um, and now we, you know, I, 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 I can't remember exactly, but hey, we're seven and three on, on those ranked team stretches so far. And let's not forget that. And this wasn't a team picked to win the Big Ten. Um, so I, I don't want to downplay it, but I sure as hell don't want to upplay it because uh, there's nothing to it. Uh, we didn't get beat by 30 points. We didn't have a blowout. Tom, how, how critical is this week uh, since you might not over here? Sorry. Since you might not have a full week to to practice and the rest of the season just with open schedule, and what do you need to get out of it? Well, I think the biggest thing is has been the hardest thing of the whole year for me, you know, with the lack of a real leader that I can go to and say, where are we? And dream out, where are we? Well, so-and-so's tired. This guy's not tired. I feel great. I feel tired, you know, I'm this and that. Um, then it's a little more of a guessing game for a coach. And I've been there before. Um, number two, I think we have to shore up our defense, our ball screen defense. I mean, uh, we got exposed in one game. And I still think I know the reasons why, and I'll keep them to myself. But uh, they weren't all Keith Appling. Um, and number three, uh, you know, constantly improve on the little things, the out-of-bounds plays. Cost ourselves at the Indiana game. We gave up two baseline out-of-bounds, and twice we didn't get the – once we didn't get it in, once we turned it over. Um, that never happens to us, the free throws. You know, a lot of the dead ball situation stuff, um, we've got to refocus on and, and get a little better at it. And that's a good thing to work on this week because it's not real taxing and you can just get it done. So um, I think it's going to be a good week for us. We did a little bit last night. And as I said, we're off today and then we're going to have some time to really work on some things and hopefully uh, dial it down and dial it up at the end of the week. Tom, uh, Dawson didn't have any points or rebounds in the second half. Looked pretty upset about being removed at one point. Uh, what's the cause of his frustration right now? Over no, 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 don't guess what you think. 
he was frustrated with himself. Uh, you know, he wasn't frustrated because he, he was taken out. He was frustrated with himself. Brandon Dawson has been great. You know, uh, again, I'm going to tell you, so I don't get adversarial here, but don't try to look into things or write what you want to write, but don't, don't tell me how to coach my team. I won't tell you how to write. So you figure what you figure, and I'll tell you what I think. Brandon Dawson is frustrated. He can't do the things that he's used to doing. I, I, I can't say it enough. You've never seen him go in and dunk the ball like he did last year. That in itself tells you that he's probably not where he needs to be. And he did a great job the first half, I'm moving without the ball. We didn't do as good a job the second half. And he is frustrated that he can't do everything. He's frustrated when he doesn't make a couple free throws. Uh, those things bother him. Me personally, I love it. Guy comes out and slams his fist on the chair. I want to slam it right with him. You know what? I love it. Uh, I, I think we need more of that. More passion you have. I mean, if you're complaining about it, that's one issue. But try not to read into certain things. Ask me, and I'll tell you the best I can. Not always the truth, so you don't think I'm that prim and proper. But for the best I can, I'll give you the, the best answer. And uh, Dawson is a freak. Uh, that's the only thing I'm going to tell you. He's done things this year that most human beings couldn't do. And I'm not happy with where his play is. He's not happy with where his play is. I'm amazed still on what he's been able to do under the circumstances. And uh, hopefully that's going to get better as each game goes on. But he's, uh, he wants to shoot a little better. For seven months, he didn't touch a basketball. Not going to get better that way, and not his fault. As a follow, oh. go ahead, Fred. As a follow-up to that, I remember in a roundtable earlier in the year, you were, you said something like, "I'm not going to accept that they don't want to be like me. Damn it, I need them to be more like me." And I'm wondering if maybe this team is taking on more of your personality. I hope so. Be not not because I want them to be my personality as much as I want them to. I want basketball, I want games, I want playing good or playing bad to matter enough that a guy will fight, cry, uh, care um, each and every day. And you, you're damn right I'm looking for that. I really am looking for that. And this team is is getting better at it, you know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Nick's getting upset the night of the Indiana game. You know what? I'd ask him what he's upset about because I didn't even know. But there's another good example. You come to the bench and you're, you're mad at everybody. It had nothing to do with anybody on our team. It had nothing to do with anything that, that was done. It had to do with somebody else on the other side. And, you know, I do like that. I, I do appreciate it. And uh, we do got to get more of that. Uh, the competitive teams, uh, they, you guys just weren't as good seeing Cleves and them. You weren't as... TV wasn't as good. You weren't as wired in. Those, uh, those huddles were like battlegrounds. Kind of going back to Brandon, where do you think his biggest struggles are right now with the knee in terms of what he can't do or what he can do a little better? I don't think he has any physical struggles with the knee right now. Or, or where is, is he still not up to? Well, he has, uh, he has total number one, missing all that time to get better. And everybody gets better between their freshman and sophomore year. Number two, the struggles with your own brain. Um, you know, and nobody can jump into that. Um, I, I said at Purdue, when he had a breakaway and last year he windmill dunked it, and this year he laid it off the back of the rim. Um, I just laughed to my staff. I said, and we wonder you know, now there was nothing wrong with his knee. Remember, remember early in the year here where he planted and went up and it kind of collapsed and I thought it happened again. And you remember he left the arena and he came back. Well, here this big, strong, tough kid just kind of tweaked it a hair and mentally thought, oh boy, and he's tough as nails. So that part, I don't know how anybody can weigh so I just have to go by the latest article I read on Adrian Peterson, which I've read a zillion on, 
and some doctor said 85 to 90 percent of the players it's the next year and so look at i push brandon every day we were, we're we're on him about things you know you question the motor sometimes but you can't question the heart because he's doing something that most people can't do if that makes any sense hey tom the way the big 10 is this year so competitive and, and even the national scene there isn't like a kentucky or north carolina that's loaded is it hard for you and maybe for us too to to tell who's good and who isn't and who's hot and who's not and and is that one of the frustrations that i hear you talking out here a little bit well well you know i'm i'm, I'm really not as frustrated as i think our fans are or other people and i think it's a joke you know to be perfectly blunt about it i mean i'm watching syracuse the other night and where they lose five out of eight or something or i'm watching you know it, it's also so schedule driven as far as the streaks nobody panics over a loss around here nobody used to panic over three or four of them now if there's two of them in a row um time to shut down the town you know but and i understand that but everybody in the big ten could could play the same people but at different times and and i think sometimes like how does duke lose by 30. you know how do they lose by 30. um i don't know what will happen this weekend but i i like the odds the other way you know and and it, maybe you played three tough games in a row and now you, you had a little letdown maybe this was somebody's game of the year everywhere we go it's legends week and it's this week and it's game of the year stuff you know and and uh, so you don't know how it affects. And, you know, I'm going to bring it up just to tick off half of you in the media. But all those distractions that you have to deal with that nobody caused but outside people, you know, th they're not easy to deal with all the time. And players are human. So I think it is hard to figure out where everybody is. I 200% I agree with you. We played North Carolina. I would have rather played the Lakers. Uh, previous Lakers rather than this, this year's <laughs> Lakers, but previous Laker teams. I, I would have rather played them than Carolina, especially on that night. Um, Kentucky last year I think was special, but I, I think right now it's as open as it is, and yet we have that one team that has kind of withstood the test of time. Indiana's been pretty solid. Even that loss to Illinois, they got a 13-point lead. Yes, they lost. But they have definitely, I think, demonstrated the most. I mean, the number two team in the league is a damn good team in Gonzaga. Our number 10 team at one time beat them at home. You know, uh, Arizona was a team. Uh, one of my assistants, a good friend, one of their assistants said early in the year, you know, we're not that good. And now what, I don't know how many they've lost, uh, more than a couple. And so it is difficult. Uh, I think Indiana has been pretty solid. I think Michigan has been pretty solid. Um, you know, we've been okay, okay. And uh, Wisconsin's been very, very solid. You know, Minnesota had its bumps. I, <clears throat> I said the other day I was looking at Iowa's schedule because I thought Iowa was a team that could make the tournament. You know, tough loss to Nebraska, but they started out Indiana, Michigan, Michigan State. They're 0-3 and the world caved in, you know, but they had maybe the best schedule as far as regrouping in the, on their one place. <clears throat> so there's so many factors that play in now that screw it up for the fans and the media because of the one place, because of the sequencing of playing, uh, and because the parity of college basketball. I think it, it really adds for a lot of problems for a coach to try to navigate through all that, and yet, uh, keep his team focused. Don't let him read their press clippings in a positive way. Don't let him read their press clippings in a negative way. Half keep him off Twitter. Put him on Twitter. I think I'm going to get a fictitious Twitter. And when we're playing bad, I'm going to fictitiously tell my guys how good they are. And when we're playing good, I'm going to fictitiously tell them how bad they are. And I think that'll be a, a new wave for the college coaches. It, can I just follow up on that? You bet. Distractions and social media and whatnot. It, do you, how does it become real to the player? Like to us, it's just words out there. Does it become, when they see and hear things, do you think it does affect them 
positively and negatively like a lot or is that a theory? No, I think you're right on. I mean, um, you know, we all, every one of us in this room, um, if I sat up here and ripped you, Bob, um, you'd feel bad. It didn't matter if I was right, wrong, or indifferent. You'd feel bad. Uh, you're, you're not that good. Drew, he might not, but, but and he's not even here, but 95% but he, of us would feel bad. Um, and, and I don't think we have any clue on the barrage that we're getting hit with now compared to how it used to be, you know? Um, and that's why, I mean, I'm semi-mature. I only put semi, but I, there's certain things I don't do during the year just because, you know, it, it sure it affects you. It has to affect you. And, and when it's at the level that it is now with Twitter and everything, um, even positively. So, you know, if I sat up here and said you were the great, and lied and said you were the greatest writer, you know, yes, big lie. Um, I, you know, and then if 10 other guys chimed in, you'd be walking out of here 6'4 instead of whatever you are. And, and, and it's funny, but we're supposedly adults. They're 20 year old college students. Does it affect them? <laughs> oh, yes, it affects them. It, it definitely affects them. And that's the new challenge, I think, for coaches, you know, is we have to find a balance in that. And, uh, and we have to spend more time with them, letting them know that, uh, you know, nobody died and, and it's better. And it's, it's a different challenge than, I, than I've had. Uh, the last couple of years is a different challenge. Now, one of the differences is the balance of power is now shifted to the Big Ten and the old Duke and North Carolinas are now Ohio State and Indiana's. And what I'm wondering is with these next two and then the Big Ten tournament, which are all gigantic, and then the bigger tournament, which are all gigantic, and you've had four or five gigantic games, do you wonder how many times you can get ready for gigantic games? Not just big games, gigantic games. Yeah, and keeping the guys from jumping off the cliff when they lose a couple of them. Um, you know, it was brought up in this interview I had today with another famous coach that our tournament, there's going to be one, maybe two teams that are ranked that are going to have to play on the opening day. Right. Oh, that's just, that should be illegal. When does that happen, you know? And that just gives you an idea on how difficult it is. And... Um, it's, it's amazing, you know, I mean, uh, I've talked to other coaches that have said, you know, I've never seen anything like this. Maybe two. I mean, if there's four teams, but, but this Minnesota team that has struggled a little bit, they were as high as eighth. Illinois was 10th. Um, you know, Michigan's been as high as what, second. Indiana, first. Michigan State fourth, um, Wisconsin, who has been the worst ranked team, and if you want to play them, I'll change your jobs for a day, you know? I mean, so, and, and, and that being said, uh, man, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really something. So I am not faking it for anybody. I'm not panicking. I am trying to do what I said the whole time. Let's get better each and every day. And um, I didn't think we got better losing to Indiana. I did not think we played as well as we could play. Um, you never know, though, how the other coach felt their team play. Uh, I did not think we played as well against Ohio State in that second half. And, uh, and yet, Kraft had a career day. He made, he made, you know, he made some plays, and so that's where we're at. Uh, Harrison Valentine is still improving. Uh, Dawson started out very good in that game. Uh, there's no doubt that Payne is still one of the most improved players in this league. Uh, you know, Nix was okay. Um, so, you know, we still got some ball out of some people. Another question. No, 
now that I anointed you the greatest yeah. writer, you're going <laughs> to ask extra questions. I think questions. you said the opposite, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. so, so is one of the, between, you said dialing it down and dialing it up, that balance between getting on your team and, being, and wanting them to improve, but then not beating them down too much, and is, is that... Are you in the lifting them up stage right now? When, you, when know, you, know, you know, what was fun is you always used to get to beat them down, you know? You did. You always get to do that because because you're, you, every coach was never satisfied. I mean, Saban's you know, never said, nobody's ever satisfied. But I think now there's so much public beat down that you have to balance it a little bit more, which I'm not sure is healthy, good. Um, I'm not sure it's bad. I, you know, I, I'll reserve judgment until I get through a few years of this new wave uh, way of doing it. But uh, I think um, I think definitely right now, Brandon Dawson being mad on the bench is a good thing because it proves he's not happy. You know, if he wasn't happy with us, that's one thing. He's not happy with him. Appling's not happy with him. Those are good things. You just got to make sure it doesn't get taken to a different level. and. Uh, you know, I can't imagine anybody from Michigan was happy after their game here. I can imagine they were ecstatic after their win over Ohio State in overtime. You know, and it's just the way it's going to be this year. And those who continue to deal with it, and I think your question was great about how many games can you have against these kind of teams. Um, I don't know because I never did it before. You know what? I don't know. I'm living off my... I'm living off my sleeve right now. People don't like that I wear my emotion on my sleeve. I'm wearing it right now because I've never done this. I haven't been there. And you know what's really something? I'm not even sure I can call somebody that's been there because this is a unique. I'm not saying, that, you know, Big East, the Big East had maybe as many or more ranked teams, but they had 16 teams. So you're still going to play some teams that, that aren't that high. And you might not even play some of the ranked teams once at one time. They didn't play everybody once, did they? So it's, it's hard to evaluate that. And uh, as we've said, and I'll reiterate it again, we played the top six teams twice. And so this team has, has gone through it. I think personally, my, my message to my team is going to be, listen, it could be fatigue, it could be disappointment, it could be whatever it could be. But what you have to learn to do if you want to make a run in your Big Ten tournament or your NCAA tournament, you have to get up for each and every game. And, you know, as this other guy told me today, but even in the NCAA tournament, if you're a top seed, you're probably getting out of your first game some, most of the time. Um, and so then you got three tough games to get to. I mean, we'll have four tough games in a two-week period, um, less time than the NCAA tournament almost. And I think that's going to make us better in the long run if we can survive it. And uh, a lot of teams in the league have the same same issue. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see what we get done, and we'll go from there. Before you can't let you get away without one question about your upcoming opponent. <laughs> yeah, M Michigan. Um, do, do you find the, the way you beat them here does that make you nervous as a coach when you go back, when you beat a team by a lot like that, or does that factor in at all because it seems like it would motivate them? Well, I think it'll motivate them, but I think our guys are going to be motivated too. I mean, uh, we had lost, what, three out of five to them or whatever, you know? I mean, we had guys that came in here never lost to them. So there's motivation on both sides. We're still playing for a lot too, number two. Number three is we didn't think we just shot the lights out or we did this or that. We thought we earned it the old-fashioned way. We defended very well. We did a pretty good job offensive. We scored inside, and uh, and that's the way. But nobody came away saying, "Wow, we're, you know, we just beat the world. We just played our best game offensively. We thought we did a very good job defensively, and we we knew. I mean, Hardaway's not going one for eleven. If Michael comes back and guards him, he's not going one for eleven. We know that. We understand that." Um, but we're going to try to make sure that whatever he scores or whatever anybody scores, um, it takes a lot of shots to do that. And that's what you look for in, a, in an event like this. Um, can, you, can, you, can we play as good a defense? Can we take care of the ball? 
can we handle their runs because they're a, they're a good spurt team. They're going to be at home. Um, I, I don't I don't fear it. I don't I don't look down on anything because we won big here. But except that if people start telling our guys, ah, you beat them by 20, it should be an easy game, you know. And but trust me, trust me, we have some people that would probably say something like that. And so I, I know our team knows that isn't the truth. They have great respect for Michigan. They know what Michigan's done. Michigan has done this all year long. I mean, almost like Indiana, uh, I don't think they've been out of the top eight, have they, all year? Seven? Is that the lowest they dropped? So they, eight, so they sustained... I mean, we were a little more up and down. They've sustained excellence like Indiana all year long. And uh, so no locker room talk, no stuff to put up, but uh, but it's true. And I uh, can't believe you didn't ask me if I, I – I love Michigan, by the way. I love them. Uh, I'm great. <laughs>